The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 830 a.m. Friday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we got markets in negative territory, extending the losses we had from yesterday. Right now, you're looking at S&P, negative by about 10 points, trading at 32.17. We actually dipped below 3,200 briefly by less than half a point, but overnight at about three in the morning Eastern time, S&P's at 31.99, currently trading 32.16, still negative by about 10 points. You look at the action we had yesterday, quite the sell off from 32.84 overnight yesterday morning. We reach a high intraday of, we'll call it about 32.70 at about 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, and then the acceleration began from 3270 down to a low point at about two o'clock of 3218. So you're talking about 50 plus points in the S&P. We finish out the trading day somewhere around that range and then we trade lower overnight. NASDAQ and Q futures, quite the acceleration. You had Apple, you had Microsoft, both of those companies down almost 5% yesterday. Remarkable numbers when you compare that to the market capitalization and the amount of money lost in those two equities alone. NASDAQ, really, from 10,900 down to almost 10,500. You're talking about almost 400 points that we traded lower. We reach a level of 10,377 overnight, just off those levels at 10,452. The Dow, 26,447, made it to a low of 26,290. So much for Dow 27,000 that we had early, early yesterday morning. Gold contract. Excuse me, gold contract. It just doesn't stop, folks. Yesterday, we make it up to 1897, holding up relatively well right now, 1892, and the price of gold just under $1,900. Silver down 20 cents at 22.78. Notes and bonds, pretty muted action, sitting right above that 139.15 price level. We made it as high as 139.25 overnight, currently sitting 139.18. The 10 year yield, 0.587% right now. All right, when you get into Asia, so how about? The Hong Kong markets, Shanghai, Shanghai down 3.86%. You have the Nikkei down about 6 tenths percent. Shanghai really getting hit overnight. And then as far as Europe, checking in on Europe numbers, the DAX down about 1.5%. FTSE down 1.1%. CAC curl down 1.2%. So some negative action on Europe, on Asia, on our markets. We're at some frothy levels up here, folks, putting the S&P just for some context. I mean, you wouldn't even know that yesterday's pullback was as dramatic as it is. We're basically just sitting right up at these levels. The high that we had back in early June, 32.31, with it, we're within about 14 points of that price level. I'd say that's a pretty comfortable point to be at in the market when you have so much uncertainty going on. We had Intel earnings after the bell last night, jumping into their numbers, we're down about $8. How about that, folks, from 60 to 52.19, my goodness, right, eight bucks, Six dollar move representing about 10 percent. So you're talking about 13 plus percent to the downside on Intel. They're going to be delaying one of their chips. Let me see. I think I got that article up there. There we go. Intel earnings. OK, disappointing Q3 earnings guidance as it delays next generation chips. You don't want to be delaying the next generation of the product that is the only product you're making, which is microchips. Intel beat on the top and bottom lines. Earnings guidance for the current quarter, lighter than expected. Company started giving full year guidance again. So EPS, $1.23 versus $1.11. Look at that beat on revenue, right? 19.7 versus 18.55. One quarter ago, Intel chose not to give full year guidance, but on Thursday, they gave it again. Now sees 485 a share, 75 billion in revenue, implying 4% growth. The company announced delays to the release of chips sporting tiny seven nanometer transistors or higher performance as it seeks to catch up with AMD, which already has seven nanometer products available. So seven nanometer transistors, that's the wave of the future, I guess. Intel discovered an issue with the manufacturing process that caused lower yields of flawless chips last year. 
Intel executives said seven nanometer chips would launch in 2021, and that came after a delay of Intel's 10 nanometer products. Looks like delays, 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 right? So the company's seven nanometer based CPU products timing is shifting approximately six months relative to prior expectations. That's a big one, folks, six months. The primary driver is the yield of the process. Well, the primary driver is the fact that they can't turn out flawless chips, which based on recent data is now trending approximately 12 months behind the company's internal target. So investors not happy. Intel trading down pretty sharply today at 5208 right now on their earnings from last night. It's just not stopping. I mean, we're down three bucks from where we were last night when you were already approaching 10% down in that stock. Uh, it just keeps going, folks. All right, what else we have going on? So it was all but expected, but China retaliating against the U.S. as we kick out China out of their Houston consulate. China orders the U.S. to close the consulate in Chengdu. China's foreign ministry announced Friday revoking the license for the U.S. consulate general in the southwestern city of Chengdu. The consular covers the autonomous region of Tibet, the municipality of Chongqing, maybe, and the province. These are some tough ones, folks. Uh, the announcement came after the U.S. ordered China to close its consulate in Houston. So, you know, tensions ratcheting it up. You look up where we are, U.S. embassy and consulates in China. We got a lot of them. Uh, Chengdu, there's the one that's been highlighted, order to close, consulates, embassy in Beijing. We'll see how this plays out, but uh, tensions ratcheting up in a big way. Okay, stocks making a lot of moves. You know what? We got to get into Goldman. Goldman, the price of doing business, uh, it goes up. But for a company like Goldman, $4 billion, 3.9 will round it up to four. Goldman Sachs and Malaysia agree to almost a $4 billion settlement over one MDB scandal. Uh, they were talking about, you know, criminality here, folks. And when you come to the table with $4 billion, those criminal charges, they go away. Goldman Sachs, they reached the settlement with the government over a multi-billion dollar scandal, 2.5 billion cash payout by Goldman and a guarantee by the bank to return at least 1.4 billion in assets linked to those bonds. Confident that securing more money from Goldman Sachs compared to previous attempts, uh, which were far below expectations, so that's Malaysia. Goldman Sachs has consistently denied wrongdoing, saying that certain members of the former Malaysian government and 1MDB lied to it about how the proceeds of the bond sales would be used. Oh, man, poor Goldman Sachs. They're getting lied to. That's a bummer. Yeah, the sarcasm, folks. Uh, the units of Goldman Sachs put in not guilty to the charges. Nonetheless, pretty remarkable. Now, the U.S. and Malaysia authorities say about $4.5 billion was stolen from 1MDB in an elaborate scheme that spanned the globe and implicated former prime minister and Goldman Sachs, among others. So uh, Goldman Sachs, though, let's check it out, right? GS, look at that. Nothing like it. Trading higher, folks. 204.74 from 201.88 overnight. And for some context on where this stock has been, Holding up pretty, pretty relatively well. We go from 130 to 203 to 205. You back it up on for some longer context. Uh, pretty remarkable when you look at 208, right? Not quite the run up some of these other companies have had in terms of check out JP Morgan over that time, right? Check out, I mean, the rebound some of these stocks had. Bank of America from two bucks to 35. Uh, craziness. All right, folks, we're going to check in on the VIX. S&P's negative by about 11 right now. We've got about 50 minutes to go until the opening bell. And this VIX, keep your eye on it, folks. When we get down to these levels, we hit a low of 2360 yesterday. We hit a low of 2361 on Tuesday within five, six, seven pennies, that low in June. Stay tuned, folks. Come back in three minutes. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is right now negative by 12. NASDAQ futures negative by 113. The Dow negative by 84. I got a chart up here of Verizon. So Verizon out with their numbers. This a super duper long term chart going back to 2004. Just interesting. Now, uh, my mom had worked for Verizon, a little bit biased in this full disclosure. Uh, she's got some Verizon shares out there. So I'm always following it. Uh, Verizon, that long term channel, it doesn't get much more defined on a monthly basis, folks. You take that low from whether it's 2000 2010, you take the low from 2015, you take it 2017, 18, that low we just had from COVID, somewhat near the end of it. We'll get into their numbers in a moment, putting it into the time frame we have. There's their earnings action. Talk about a little bit of volatility on Verizon. We closed at 55.85. We're up currently at 56.14 to get into their numbers, what they said. So, Quarterly profit, $1.18 a share, three cents above estimates. Revenue beat forecast as well. Not surprising. They said experienced a negative impact from COVID, which hurt wireless service. That one, a little interesting, right? Everyone's got to be on their phone how that's happening. But guess what? Money, money is tight for a lot of people right now. And just you just don't have the amount of money to spend on. Uh, maybe you got to cut those bills. Maybe you spend a little bit too much on your cell phone bill. Maybe you spend a little bit too much on your cable bill, right? All that stuff. You trim it up, save some money during this time. Uh, which hurt wireless service and, of course, ad spending revenue. American Express out with their numbers this morning as well. Quarterly earnings, 29 cents a share. The estimate was 11 cents loss. How about that? Revenue came in below estimates, however. So they made 29 cents a share. The market said they were going to lose 11 cents a share, but the revenue came in below estimates. The company said spending volumes hit a low point in April, followed by gradual rebound in May and June. American Express shares so far this morning. AXP is their symbol. A little bit lower to 95.80, actually spiked to almost 94. Yeah, 94 on the dot on their number at 7 a.m. That conference call just beginning. Seems like maybe they're liking what they're saying as it's ticking up a bit within about 50 cents of where we closed yesterday on American Express. 
Honeywell out with their numbers, beat estimates by five cents a share, quarterly earnings $1.26, revenue beats as well. Industrial conglomerate said it will face ongoing sales challenges in certain segments due to the pandemic, including aerospace and oil and gas. Well, we know oil and gas has been in big trouble. Uh, rebounded somewhat nicely recently, but I guess aerospace as well. Don't tell Elon Musk that though, no. Uh, Slumberjay, oil field services company, quarterly profit, five cents a share, the estimate was a penny a share loss. Revenue in line with expectations, as with others in the industry, Slumberjay customers reduced their activity as oil prices slump. Not surprising. So Honeywell and Slumberjay, H-O-N is Honeywell. There's a little volatility for you right now. We're trading at about 155, so up a bit from 153.73. SLB, Slumberjay with their numbers. They beat, so from 1930 to 1970 so far on Slumberjay shares. We covered Goldman, we covered Intel, Mattel out with their earnings. 26 cents a share for the latest quarter, smaller than 34 that the market, uh, excuse me, they lost 26 cents a share, smaller than the 34 cent loss the market was looking for. They beat on revenue as well. Barbie brand, 35% growth. How about that? Barbie, coronavirus, the slump, good to the Barbie brand. MAT is their symbol. I mean, quite a pop, folks. From 11.63, we were up more than a dollar on their numbers last night to 12.67. We're still up about 50 cents. Decent move on an $11 stock up to 12.14 right now on Mattel earnings. Disney. So they just keep pushing back the Mulan movie, folks. They're going to delay the release of its Mulan movie while also pushing back new installments of Star Wars and Avatar. At the same time, the Paramount unit of Viacom pushed back the release date of its Top Gun sequel, Top Gun Maverick. You got Tom Cruise back in the saddle, Top Gun. Uh, I'm interested in checking that one out, I'm sure with a lot of people. Uh, Long-awaited sequel, these movie, these movie companies, it is just, uh, you can't overstate the difficult nature they're dealing with here in terms of trying to be in a world and, and, and there you see the reaction on Disney, right? Even from yesterday, we were at 119, you see the pop, from 118, 115, 50 right now. Uh, Long-term, Disney Plus, growing at rapid numbers, but in the short term, you can't overstate. Trying to produce movies, trying to put them into movie theaters, and then uh, the parks business as well, as you have Disney down at about 115.50 this morning, almost $2.50 from the close yesterday of 118.12. All right, let's check in on some of the tech stocks before we get around. Microsoft, I mean, look at this drop off, right? So you get Microsoft earnings after the bell on Wednesday. The cascade really begins uh, middle of the day on Thursday. I mean, you had Microsoft. It spiked to 210.92. We were within a hair of where we closed at. And then we basically finished the day at about 202. You spiked down to 199. Microsoft at about 200. You lost about $10, folks, in the span of 24 hours. 5% from Microsoft. We were to the downside. Apple shares, similar action on Apple. Look at that cascade. I mean, this week we were at 398. We just dropped to 363. We're talking about $35 in the span of three trades in a crisis. Trading at 365.75. Some of these tech stocks just maybe getting a little bit ahead of themselves, folks. Uh, this is a daily. I mean, it's remarkable that even during COVID, we barely, barely saw Apple pay the price of that big of a bar, right? Check it out. I mean, maybe the worst of the worst, March 20th around, we dropped from 251 to 228. Like I just mentioned, this bar here, whoops. We're talking about on Apple from 388 to 368. Uh, overnight, you saw that a little bit even wider in terms of the highs to lows, but big action for sure. Amazon shares under 3,000 this morning. We're trading at 29.48, give or take. We closed yesterday 29.86. Amazon just been bouncing around between about 3,000 and 3,200 since about July 6th, since we eclipsed that level. And uh, we got to check in on our man Elon Musk and Tesla pulling back yet again as well. Quite the day for Tesla. Tesla yesterday, zoom on, on this daily bar. How about a $209 bar from $1689 to $1480? We closed at $1513, but the action this morning, these volatile stocks, man, it's just from $1716 to $1407 in the span of almost 24 hours. You almost can't overstate that, folks. And the VIX this morning, talk about some elevated levels. We go from 2360 to 2835 at the end of the day yesterday. And really keep your eye on this because it seems like these levels, folks, 2354 was the low in June, 2492, low in early July. And as I mentioned, 
on, I believe that's Tuesday, we touched 2361. On Thursday, 2360, and the market says, no, 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 we're back here. We're not going to be comfortable with a VIX below 2350 right now with everything going on in this market. And as you saw, we're back at about 27 on the VIX. All right, folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. You got one more week. You can jump in and become a charter member of Rocket Equities and Options. I put together a weekly report. I expect to put something up this weekend. I'm going to be looking at long-term equities, short-term trades, some possible option trades in there occasionally as well. Uh, weekly report out every Monday. I encourage you to check it out. You just enter the promo code ROCKET at checkout. This runs through July. Subscribe, add that monthly. When you see the enter promo code R-O-C-K-E-T, make sure you hit the add code button. You'll see the savings reflected and you lock that in for as long as you remain a subscriber. So you only end up paying $48.50 a month. And I encourage you to check it out. Still comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So lock in the rate. So one time you're gonna be able to lock in that rate forever for the life of your subscription. I appreciate everybody giving it a try. And uh, if you don't like it, get your 30 day money back guarantee. Nothing to lose. All right, folks, we got the s and P's. What's going to happen here? We'll take it up by eight points. We were below 3,200. You got the S&Ps now trading at 32.1875. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006. And like many of you, was drawn in by Bam! as well as whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. S&P is negative by about nine points right now, hanging at 32.17. I mean, you zoom it in, this is a five-minute bar. Since I came on the air at 8.30, we're just hovering right around this level, folks. We got about 35 minutes to go until the opening bell. Some other companies with earnings, Skechers. How about it? They lost 44 cents a share, smaller though than the 66 cents the market was looking for. Revenue also above estimates, even though the CEO said like most businesses, the company had never faced a more challenging time. Well, not too surprising there, folks. But losing mess less money than the market anticipated. We're trading higher from 31 to 34. You're up 8, 9% in that stock overnight on Skechers. You know what else is trading higher? Beer, Boston Beer, more than double the consensus estimate of 243 a share. Quarterly earnings, how about 488 a share for the second quarter? Revenue, not surprising when you beat by profit like that. Top forecast as well, helped by a surge in demand for home consumption of its products, even as bars and restaurants were shut down. Pretty remarkable when you think about the amount of beer that's probably consumed outside of the home in terms of at bars restaurants, parties, even parties at friend's house if you're talking about. But Sam Adams, look at this, from 660, we're trading with a pretty wide bid ask right now, 692 by 718, but nonetheless charging higher. For some context on this stock, folks, it's a good time to be a Samuel Adams beer holder from 400 down to 300, and we're gonna open probably about 690 to 700 this morning on Sam Adams. All right, jumping around to other stocks, Edward Life Sciences, they had earnings this morning, 34 cents a share. Medical product makers revenue also above forecast, double the consensus estimate. They were looking for 17, came in at 34. EW, we're gonna put this in the short term as we wrap up the program. We're gonna open at about 80 from 77.32, and I wanted to get into Skyworks. Skyworks, quarterly profit of $1.25, 13 cents above, revenue beat, and Under Armour got a catalyst call buy as well. So SWKS, oh, come on, we got 20 seconds. There's Skyworks, lower to 131.80 from about 136, and we'll finish it up with Under Armour, trading higher on that call to 11.11. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Larry Pesavento. He's coming up live next. We'll be right back.